Hello to everybody. Uh, I'm uh, going to take you uh, in uh, eastern part of uh, Middle Europe uh, in, uh, um, for, to, to show you a, a case study uh, very, uh, of a very narrow topic of uh, an aftermath of a migra migration that is uh, not conf confirmed so far by uh, bioarchaeological um, uh, science because of uh, the uh, this is a part of uh, late unfields in, uh, of the north. So if we have unfields, we have cremations, as we know uh, that hampers our possibilities to uh, to confirm some migratory mi migration uh, theories uh, that are existed uh, uh, in the literature from many decades, but they are still only uh, archaeological uh, indications, not um, biosciences, uh, not supported but uh, by biosciences. Uh, and uh, where are we? Uh, we are, as, as I said, uh, in the eastern part of uh, Middle Europe, uh, southern Baltic coast, Baltic Sea coast, uh, not very far from the Harstadt culture uh, area. Uh, it, these were interconnected uh, words, of course, uh, even with the northern Mediterranean. There are some links uh, between uh, all these regions in uh, early Iron Age Europe. Uh, we are uh, more or less in uh, uh, half um, first half millennium uh, BC. Uh, and uh, these societies are called by archaeologists as Pomeranian culture, uh, late Lusatian culture, and so on. So uh, that's it's our framework. Um, and uh, just to uh, show you a, a, a quick, very quick uh, review of some material remains uh, that characterize these um, societies. Uh, it starts, the, the phenomenon of Pomeranian culture starts somewhere at the turn of the Bronze and uh, Early Iron Age. Uh, it is in um, 8th uh, century BC. Uh, when uh, first large flat uh, necropolis with cremations are founded in, in this area, uh, the late Enfits, uh, I mean the, the, the second half of uh, second millennium BC, there uh, uh, show no uh, flat, um, this typical Enfits uh, there. Uh, the the um, tumulus uh, tradition was uh, somehow longer um, persisting uh, there. But at the end of the Bronze Age, we uh, see this typical uniform urns uh, with cremations, with a modest uh, furnishing, with pins, uh, like in all uh, Middle European uh, unfit communities. Uh, and also the, the hoarding. Um, uh, tradition is very um, intensively um, represented uh, at this uh, late bronze, early iron age transition. And um, uh, to, 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 to uh, go further to next step, uh, development phase uh, that uh, covers mostly late Hanstadt period, uh, we, we uh, have uh, one of uh, these very typical tribes uh, of uh, the Pomeranian culture, I mean face urns, that are uh, represented here in a huge quantity. It's uh, really a, a biggest collection, a biggest concentra concentration of these anthropomorphic vessels in Europe. It's more than 2,000 um, vessels like this. Uh, with some uh, metals that are um, interregional forms that uh, allow us to date this uh, phenomenon as a late Hallstatt period phenomenon. And the late phase of this uh, culture, uh, it uh, is already uh, some uh, different in, uh, in terms of uh, dating artifacts. Most of them are indicators of early Latin uh, period and face urns and this um, uh, cyst stone graves are um, lacking from, from this phase, um, from this late phase. Uh, and uh, what is interesting um, is the fact that at the turn of the Hallstatt uh, C and D period, uh, the most um, characteristic traits of this uh, Pomeranian phenomenon are starting to appear outside the Pomerania. 
And we we uh, have the Pomeranian area. This uh, this is this part uh, southern Balti Baltic coast. This is geographically and historically Pomerania, and uh, here in Greater Poland, Mazovia, and even further south, uh, we uh, have this uh, um, uh, traits uh, as I uh, showed before. Uh, not on uh, uh, that uh, quantity as in Pomerania, but on a smaller scale, but still they are something new on these areas. And of course, as in, in many uh, cases of uh, archaeologically alleged migrations, there are two concurrent uh, opinions that probably it, the spreading of these um, uh, cultural features is not because of migration, physical migration, but maybe because of the fusion of idea and so on. There, are, there were many um, decades of discussion between two schools in Polish archaeology. Uh, now uh, we uh, seem to have uh, a kind of consensus that there was a physical migration. Uh, I'm not going to, um, to go into detail of this, this uh, discussion to, to, to present the arguments of each, um, each school. Uh, but I, I think that from some next slides it became um, apparent why I'm, uh, I am a supporter of a mig migration scenario in this case. <clears throat> uh, in a 2016 publication uh, I argued that there are um, at least three or several uh, components uh, of the culture, of the whole cultural package that are uh, very hard to explain in terms of diffusion, of, of tra uh, transmission of idea and not physical migrations. Uh, first of them are large collective stone graves, seized graves made of um, uh, stone slabs on, or uh, stones like in this case uh, that uh, contain uh, many uh, urns, cinerary uh, urns uh, with furnishings and so on. This is uh, uh, the, the one uh, typical trait, I call it, it's uh, one of northern components. Uh, the second one are face urns and uh, vessels alike, um, like this uh, like this one that is also pear shaped uh, like the uh, typical face urn but it uh, does not have um, this representation of human face uh, but it has a, a cup lid and so on so it's more or less the same uh, idea uh, and the third um, element of this northern components is uh, are uh, sumptuous uh, bronze ornaments uh, especially um, bronze neck rings, multi-part uh, collar neck rings uh, that are um, <clears throat> uh, very um, heavy, two, three kilograms of bronze, uh, and that uh, are also typical on, only for this northern society, this Pomerania society. And uh, uh, because these three elements are appearing in a package on the south, I think that it would be hard to explain it uh, uh, as a, a movement of ideas only. It was a whole package, it was uh, connected somehow. Uh, These uh, seized graves made of uh, stone slabs are uh, uh, most probably um, family burial places uh, with uh, urns uh, subsequently added. Uh, starting from the north, uh, where where usually on the in the northern uh, corner of, of such a construction there was a, a huge uh, stone slab, and uh, it was uh, it, the, the urns was were added um, over a period of time. Sometimes even uh, we can uh, capture uh, stylistic changes uh, within one grave. Uh, like in this case, when uh, where we have uh, these flat uh, leads uh, in the northern uh, part, they are typical for Harstad D and uh, CD uh, transition. And in the southern part, we have uh, urns covered with these carinated balls that are a typical uh, representants of late uh, Harstad uh, stylistics. So we have some kind of 
uh, sequences, uh, stylistic sequences um, captured there. Here. Uh, and, uh, and as we uh, take a look as, uh, at a um, uh, distribution chart, uh, map uh, of uh, the sites that are attributed to Pomeranian culture, where this uh, red are all sites of this culture, and the uh, uh, blue ones are those containing this northern component, we can see at the first site uh, a typical diffusion pattern. Yeah, so it, it doesn't uh, speak anything about the nature of the distribution of these uh, northern components. But if we uh, if we uh, map only the graves uh, containing uh, at least fifteen urns, which I perceive as as um, in small cemetery indeed, it's. it's uh, uh, they, they are. Uh, they form a, a very specific pattern that, uh, for me, uh, represents. I'm willing to to interpret it as a, a reflection of strengthening of uh, basic social um, uh, bonds uh, in the areas outside the motherland, in the areas on the uh, on the strange land, on a strange land uh, where the the. Um, uh, this was, was uh, very important to, to be together in this uh, strange land. As for the uh, first urns, uh, the most um, dense distribution is, of course, in Pomerania, in the area that was uh, directly involved in the amber collecting and trading uh, further salt and so on. We can see even some uh, and Mediterranean inspirations on these urns and so on. So this was part, of course, of these trade uh, channels that were from Adriatic Sea to the Baltic Sea uh, in this uh, time. But um, beside this uh, Pomeranian concentrations, we have some very distant, um, the very distant examples, like in Western Ukraine. This uh, case uh, in a typical Pomeranian grave with this uh, stone face grave and, 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 and face urn uh, that are very um, unique at this area. They are a single find in this area. It, and this would be very hard to explain in terms of diffusion. It was a group of migrants. Um, and it also pertains, uh, the, the same is true for, for chronological scope, not only geographical, but uh, also at the end of this period of alleged migration, uh, we have some uh, urns uh, at the very outskirts of the, this um, culture, Pomeranian culture range uh, that are somehow um, strange uh, uh, looking. And most probably they uh, were created. This is uh, um, already, as we've seen, the, the, the brooch uh, over the, um, uh, the early Latin period. And probably the um, uh, porter that made this vessel did not have direct contact with this motherland uh, uh, anymore. Uh, and uh, the last uh, example I wanted to uh, show are these uh, sumptuous bronze ornaments, uh, neck rings uh, that are um, uh, home, one of the hallmarks of Pomeranian culture. They are also depicted on this fern earth with uh, very details uh, and so on. And because they were part of ethnographic or tribal uh, dress, they were not uh, resembled or used by any of early Iron Age societies on Polish soils, so uh, they were unique to these Pomeranian societies, and um, they were consist they were um, consisted of uh, uh, many rings, uh, richly decorated rings uh, that were fastened on the back uh, with a buckle. Uh, these details we can see also on these first urns, uh, but. As we can see, the distribution of these uh, uh, ornaments, it's more or less the same as with um, face urns. Uh, but some uh, items found um, very far from this motherland Pomeranian uh, area are somehow, uh, somehow uh, different. And they show us uh, how 
uh, they tried these migrants, as I think, uh, they showed they tried to to be yourself on this strange land. Uh, this in this case, uh, we have a, a, a single ring of that of that neck ring found uh, close to Krakow, very far from Pomerania. Uh, that is uh, oops, that is. Um, uh, made very strange. Its uh, shape of the insection is uh, untypical completely. Its ornamentation was remade, re, uh, reworked, uh, but not uh, due to, uh, due to uh, use and wear, but uh, at the stage of production. Probably the uh, person who made it was commissioned to make it, but it, uh, he or she never saw, uh, uh, never have never seen uh, such an ornament. Uh, in, uh, in another case, uh, uh, we have uh, a single ring, uh, once more, that is made of uh, another ornament. Uh, we can see that on the uh, reverse, uh, on the bottom side of this uh, neck ring, we have a uh, slightly mechanically hammered uh, old ornament uh, that is uh, identical uh, with uh, it's better uh, visible on uh, on the drawing. That is typical of another uh, ornamented type. Uh, I mean, uh, ankle rings, ankle rings uh, that were uh, typical. These green dots uh, show uh, that, uh, this uh, of local and late Alfred culture, and uh, it is, it seems that uh, in this case we have uh, a situation where. Uh, the migrating group wanting to, I don't know, supplement a set of neck rig was forced to use a um, local bronze. Did they obtain it uh, violently or not? We, of, of course, don't know. But uh, they uh, did not have uh, a, smith, a foundry man uh, among them. They have smith, skilled smith, because the ornamentation is very, the, the, this, uh, upward ornamentation is very Pomeranian in, in uh, style, uh, but they wasn't able to re uh, remelt uh, this, this bronze item. Uh, yeah, I have to leave. It's very um, last example. Uh, here we have uh, another uh, case, uh, a hoard consisting of a neck ring and a necklace, but a very strange necklace that is made also from bent back uh, ankle ring. So here we have no, not even a smith, uh, but a strongman to, to uh, bend it back because it's two, one or two centimeters thick uh, ornament. And uh, this all, this uh, not in, uh, th this uh, attempts at um, being yourself, uh, express yourself, are not uh, visible in economical. Um, uh, layer, I would say. It's um, in economy very quickly uh, fit to uh, local uh, late unfit standards. I'm not going to go into details. These are my conclusions that uh, this moment of um, uh, visually expressing uh, identity is uh, very short. It's Two, maybe two, three generations. Afterwards, it was stopped. It was uh, melted together in uh, the, the, the local po population. Uh, the uh, social structure of these groups was, were complex, of course, but they also lacking some um, uh, specialists, for example. So, uh, and of course, the, the last uh, um, conclusion is that this inner domain of culture were more persistent uh, uh, to changes and this outer like economy was uh, uh, changeable uh, even more. Thank you very much. Sorry for uh, being